Hey guys, here is the Killer Nacho, and I have an epic monotype with Mudquaza. This thing was like probably the longest battle I ever had. The entire battle needs to be sped up, and still, look how long the video is. But yeah, so I taunt right off the bat with Tyranitar, then set up a Dragon Dance. I know he's going to U-turn here, but um, I know it wouldn't do too much to me. He goes out into Jirachi, and I'm just kind of hoping it's not a Scarf Rachi because I have Earthquake on this thing, but it is a Scarf Rachi. Um, but even then, it's still too early to go Iron Head, so I feel safe just Earthquaking. And I end up hitting the Sand Slash on the switch. Kind of sucks. I have to switch against Sand Slash. Can't do anything to it. So he goes Earthquake on the switch. Um, and I go into Breloom, which takes the Earthquake quite nicely. And I'm just going to Spore to get something to sleep. And he goes out into a Cress, um, which is considered yellow according to Bulbapedia. Um... And Ballapedia just uses whatever the Pokedex says the colors are. There's a few weird Pokemon. I'll leave a link in the description to the list that we were going by. Um, but, yeah, so Crest is considered yellow. His team is yellow. I have green, if you didn't figure it out already. Um, but as you can see, this is a Rest Talking Cresselius, which is actually really bad for me. Um, because I that means I really don't have a good counter for it. Um, in my entire team, I don't have a good counter for it because my Tyranitar doesn't carry Crunch. Um, I kind of wish I carried Crunch now, but instead I carried the Taunt, which kind of helped against Uxie, but at this point, I'd really, really like to have the Crunch. Um, anyway, as you can see, I'm just hoping that I it'll stay asleep long enough for me to kill it, but he uh, does survive and go rest, and he gets all that HP back. Unfortunately, Speed Bomb, or sorry, not Speed Bomb, Seed Bomb is a 5-hit KO on this thing. I end up getting a crit, and it does, by the looks of it, more than half. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe min-max damage, maybe two more seed bombs, because I'm faster than this thing. I get two more seed bombs on this thing. I'm hoping that um, two seed bombs after, you know, after that gay crit is able to kill it. And it does look like it might be able to, so I go for the seed bomb again. Um, and I guess, I don't know, the crit hacks, you know, kind of was returning there. He said he survived with one hit point. I was one HP away from just getting rid of this annoying Cressela so early, and now it just, you know, it sucks. So I decided just to switch in a Tyranitar. Maybe I'll be able to, um... I decided to go Stone Edge here, because I didn't expect him to stay in. Actually, no. I make a good play here. I Earthquake, because I predicted the switch into the Scarf Rachi, and I just wanted to get damage on it. So I go for the Earthquake on the switch, and I hit the Scarf Jirachi. And that was really good play for me. Um, so yeah, he goes U-turn. I kind of expected him to. I just go out into Bronzong, because I want to set up some Stealth Rocks. He goes out into Moltres, so I can't do that. So I go out into Cradilly, who is an amazing special tank in the um, Sandstorm, because of the Sandstorm special defense boost for rock types. Um, so I just recover, because I knew he'd probably switch, and I just want to be at full health later. Um, I checked Smogin. Um, and the number one Smogin set for Ampharos involved Substitute, so I thought he would do that, and then I could maybe break the sub with a uh, Rock Slide, but he Toxics, and I was not expecting that, and that's going to cripple my Cradilly because my Cradilly won't be able to wall much when it's Toxic Poisoned. And I was going to bring Meganium, too, but oh well. But anyway, about this Bronzong, according to Bulbapedia and the Pokedex, Bronzong is green, not blue, so that's the reason I'm allowed to have it on my team. It's one of the weird things about um, the actual official color list, but whatever. So yeah, I go into Breloom, and I just spore it, and I didn't think, I thought he'd switch, I go into Tyranitar, and he ends up getting the first turn wake, which was kind of just annoying, because he just U-turns and goes into Sand Slash, uh, which sucks, because, yeah, I could have gotten maybe a free setup on that thing, but oh well. So I go on to Politoed. Um, I knew where he'd Rapid Spin because um, Tan Slash is a pretty notorious Rapid Spinner, and I decided just to go Surf. I guess I'd hit something. Um, it's stabbed, and I just want to get damage on his team. I mean, he's still 6-6 six, six for crying out loud. Um, so yeah, he goes for the Discharge, and that's not going to do anything to Bronzong. Um... Well, nearly nothing to Bronzong, because Bronzong's a pretty awesome tank. I decided to go Hypnosis on the Switch, but um, I end up missing the Uxie, which was annoying. And keep in mind that while his Cressela is asleep, Rest doesn't count towards Sleep Claws. So, yeah, I decided to set up Stealth Rocks as he yawns. I decided to switch now into somebody who's all already um, status conditioned, so he couldn't yawn me. Um, but he just U-turns and goes out in the Sand Slash against my Cradilly. Um basically just a rapid spin. I knew that's what he was planning to do, but at least it gives me an opportunity to toxic it, so at least he won't be gaining health anymore. Or, yeah, just gaining health with the sandstorm and the lefties. 
But um, so that keeps him from gaining health. I just go for the recover, knowing he'd probably switch, and I want to be have Cradilly back to pretty good health uh, for later in the battle. So I go into Breloom, um, as he U turns, and he goes out into Molt Trace again. And I kind of figured he would go Air Slash, but Polytoad's still a great special wall. Um, so he does Air Slash, and it does. I'm hoping it's not a two hit KO. Um, but he actually carries a hidden power, electric or grass, not really sure which, but that kills Politoed. That was weird because most, um, Molt Traces carry hidden power fighting, so I don't know. So I decided to reveal my last Pokemon, Flygon, um, and, yeah, it's a Scar Flygon, so I just go for Stone Edge and that'll kill the Molt Trace. And the first two Pokemon in the battle finally died. I mean, this is actually, I think... I think, like, 15 minutes into the battle, and finally the first Pokemon dies. But anyway, I just go Toxic, end up hitting the, um, Crest here, as he Heal Bells with Ampharos, which sucks, because that gets rid of the Toxic on, uh, what's it called? Sand Slash. Anyway, so his Crest is Toxic Poison, which really isn't too helpful because of the rest, so I decided to go out on Tyranitar, knowing I can live an attack from that thing due to the Sandstorm Special Defense Boost for Rock-types, and I just go for the Stone Edge as he goes out into Sand Slash. Pretty good move for him. So he goes Stone Edge on my Switch as I go into Breloom. Breloom resists that anyway. And I'm just going to go Sea bomb hoping to do significant damage to it, and I get to Red, which is really helpful, knowing that it'll die later, hopefully. And I guess you were just hoping for the um, evasion hacks with, what, Sand Veil that Sand Slash has, but he doesn't get it because my Breloom takes it down with Seed Bomb. So he goes out into Crest once again and just Ice Beams, and that's going to not do anything to Bronzong. <laughs> um, and, yeah, I decide, he does Charge Beam now, he's going to try to set up some uh, special attack uh, boost, so I just go for the Stone Edge once again, now that his Sand Slash is gone, he can't get rid of it, um, which is kind of helpful, because I, in a battle like this, where we're, both of us are switching a lot, I don't want to be at the disadvantage that I'm the only one with Stealth Rocks on my side of the field, so it was important for me to get up those Stealth Rocks. So yeah, I go out into Cradilly, um, and he gets the Ice Beam off the Rest Talk, which kind of sucks, but um, at the same time, not really, I'm just kind of Death Fodder in Cradilly here, so I could get a safe switch into my Tyranitar. Um, so I just rock slide for extra damage, and he doesn't kill me because of bad beats off the rest. And yeah, he wakes up and then kills my Cradilly, so my Cradilly goes down, but uh, Cradilly was kind of worthless to me at this point, so I, like I said, it was just death fodder. I go out on a Tyranitar, and I'm just going to get the free Stone Edge on something. He can't really go into Jirachi because Jirachi has weak HP, um, so he won't take the Stone Edge. He'll probably die to the Stone Edge, actually, so I, that was pretty nice. I know I got a free Stone Edge on something. So I got it on Uxie. He's going to U-turn as I go into Breloom and then go back into Jirachi and U-turn again because it's the best play for him. And he ends up U-turning on my Bronzong, so he sends out the Crest again my Bronzong again, which sucks. Um, so I go for the Hypnosis, because I kind of knew he'd charge beam, try to get something up, and I just want to get him sleep on my terms, not on his terms, because uh, Rest is a guaranteed two-turn sleep, why I want him to be un to predictable, so I'm trying to get to sleep by Hypnosis or uh, Spore or something. But he just goes Rest here, and I predicted that Rest because he saw the Hypnosis. Um, so I go out on a Tyranitar, he does Rest, which is good, and that means I get another free Stone Edge on something, and he just goes out into Ampharos so, for me to kill it. So I take down the Ampharos, which is good. So he goes out on a Jirachi, which is kind of cool because that Jirachi is getting withered down by Stealth Rocks so ever slowly. And um, yeah, I go out on a Bronzong to take the U-turn. He goes out back into Uxie and U-turns again as I go for the Reflect. Um, I don't really know why I went Reflect there. I guess so I take less damage from U-turn because that U-turn damage starting to rack up. Whatever. So he gets an Ice Beam, doesn't do anything, um, and I just go for the Gyro Ball because I kind of want to wither this thing down. Gyro Ball is not going to be doing too much to Cresselia, but enough, because I just want to get into range that I can maybe kill it with something, whether it's an Outrage from my Flygon or maybe a Stone Edge from my Tyranitar, I don't know. Um, and he just keeps on charge beaming, and he's getting quite a few of them, and I finally get that Hypnosis. Um, I was so praying he wouldn't rest there, and he doesn't, so I get the Hypnosis off, and then he just rest talks for the first turn of Guaranteed Sleep, and gets the charge beam, unfortunately. Um, as I wither him down once again with Gyro Ball. So I'm thinking I have a 66.6% .6 chance um, that he won't get Ice Beam off the rest talk. So I go out on the Flygon, and... Um, he do actually was hoping for the wake up, so he doesn't even use rest talk, and he doesn't again there after he survived the outrage. So thank God he was trying to, um, yeah, 
he was trying to predict the wake up and he didn't get it. So that was great for me. So he goes out on a Jirachi and goes Ice Punch because um, that's his best play. And he gets a crit. I don't know if it mattered. Um, but now it comes down to a speed tie because both of us are running Adamant Scarf. And it was a speed tie and I won it. So great game. Mud Quasi is a great battler. I'll leave the link to his channel in the description. I mean, I just won by speed tie. So it was a great match. So make sure you check him out and rate, comment, subscribe me. So good game. Bye. So yeah, me and Jolt Spolt made a deal that um, if she dyed her hair red, I would shave my beard, and she dyed her hair red, so I am quite beardless at the moment, so, <laughs> which sucks. I hate the way I look like this. I really love my beard. But anyway, today's question of the day is, I want your guys' opinion. Do I look better with or without the beard? Alright, so leave a comment, and see you guys next time. Bye. Also, make sure you check out Mudquaza. He's a cool guy and a fun battler.